A middle-aged man named Lemuel Gulliver wakes up in his messy New York apartment and goes on with his morning routine. He talks to his superhero toys on a shelf and dances in the shower, showing us his goofy side. Gulliver works in the mailroom of a New York newspaper company. That day, he meets a new employee named Dan and befriends him. Gulliver is Dan's boss in the mailing department. As the two deliver their mail for the day, they come across Gulliver's longtime crush and a journalist named Darcy Silverman. He has been in love with her for years, but has never confessed. Later that day, Dan brings out a notice that says he has been promoted to head of the mail department on his first day. Gulliver has been working in the facility for 10 years, but no one there respects him. Dan claims that Gulliver is scared to talk and will never progress in life other than his mailroom job. A distressed Gulliver is walking out of the office and notices Darcy working late. He gathers up courage and goes to her cabin to ask her out. However, his nerves get the best of him, so instead, he picks up a random paper from her desk and heads out. Darcy asks him if he wants to apply for a travel writing assignment. A nervous Gulliver agrees and has to submit a travel blog the following day. At home, he copies and pastes several articles from the internet for the blog. The following day at work, he submits it to Darcy, who is impressed by his writing skills and provides him with a new task. She wants him to travel to the Bermuda Triangle and write an article about the legends of ships mysteriously disappearing there. To impress her, Gulliver agrees. Darcy arranges a contact and a boat for him. Gulliver flies to Bermuda the very next day, where he is picked up by a man. He takes Gulliver to a rented boat and shows him how to use it. The journey is pretty simple as the boat is automated. Gulliver finally sails for the Bermuda Triangle alone in the boat. For the first few hours, he enjoys himself by reading how to build a robot magazines and drinking several cans of coke. He soon falls asleep. Sometime later, he wakes up to a massive wave in front of him. A sea storm hits and he quickly puts a life jacket on. The boat shakes vigorously in the water. Gulliver turns around to see an enormous sea tornado coming his way. Gulliver, with his boat, is sucked on top of the tornado, then right into its eye. The screen goes black. When Gulliver opens his eyes, he cannot move his body. He looks down and is surprised when he sees some tiny men standing on top of his chest. Their leader introduces himself as the Commander Edward Edwardian of the Lilliput. The camera zooms out, showing us a crowd of tiny people standing around Gulliver. He is pinned to the ground with tiny ropes and wood. Commander Edward calls Gulliver a beast. A confused Gulliver yells in fear and breaks free from the ropes easily. Thinking that this is a dream, he tries closing his eyes. Edward orders his soldiers to bring the beast down. The soldiers attach their hooks to Gulliver's pants and make him fall unconscious. When he wakes up, Gulliver finds himself tied to a cart and being pulled into the kingdom of Lilliput. The tiny civilians come out of their houses to get a look at the beast. He is pulled into the royal palace and presented to the king of Lilliput, King Theodore. The king's daughter, Princess Mary, pities Gulliver and asks Edward if the restraints are necessary. Edward claims that Gulliver is a spy from their enemy kingdom, Blefusia. Gulliver finally speaks and asks the king where he is. King Theodore's secretary, Jinx, tells him that he is in Lilliput, the greatest nation in the world. Gulliver thinks this is a prank and asks the non-existent cameraman to show himself. In the following scene, we see Gulliver imprisoned inside a cave. He meets a fellow prisoner named Horatio, who is sentenced to life by Edward for trying to court Princess Mary. The two are approached by Edward again, who listens to them referring to him as lame-ass. When an angry Edward threatens to imprison them for life, Gulliver claims lame-ass means someone who is brave. Happy with the answer, Edward takes both the prisoners to a field to plow it with the help of Gulliver's strength. He restrains Gulliver with a machine. Just then, two rings of a bell are heard from the palace, indicating that Blefusia has attacked. They are trying to kidnap Princess Mary and have started a fire at the palace. Edward quickly runs to the palace and orders everyone not to save the princess, as he wants to be the one to save her, but Horatio asks Gulliver to do it, because Edward can't reach her on time. Gulliver easily takes the Blefusian soldiers down and saves the princess, but the king and his secretary are stuck in the fire. Gulliver, in a hurry, urinates on the building. Everyone claps for him when he stops the fire and saves King Theodore. The king removes him and Horatio from imprisonment and thanks Gulliver for his bravery. He also invites everyone for a feast at night to celebrate the occasion. Edward is furious to see someone else being praised for their bravery. At the feast, the king asks Gulliver where he is from, and he answers he is from Manhattan. The people assume that Gulliver was the president of Manhattan, as he is the bravest one there. Gulliver feels like a hero for the first time in his life, so he fabricates the story, claiming he was known as President the Awesome. Everyone believes him, except for Edward. 
The following day, the people of Lilliput built a massive home for Gulliver, with all the facilities he couldn't get when he was in New York. Gulliver also makes them build a theater to fit everyone in the kingdom. Then, he shows them a drama of the sinking Titanic, claiming it to be the story of his life. Everyone is amazed by the tragic life that he has had. Edward inquires how he was saved after drowning, and Gulliver claims that he was resuscitated. Later, Horatio asks Gulliver to help him impress Princess Mary, and Gulliver agrees. The two go to the palace, and Horatio approaches the princess. A hidden Gulliver recites the lyrics of the song Kiss, making Horatio repeat it. By the end of it, the princess starts to fall for Horatio, but she is called by Edward, who has come to court her. The two have been destined to get married, as Edward is the bravest of the kingdom. Princess Mary isn't fond of Edward, but she cannot seem to get rid of him. Somewhere else, the search party finds the washed-up boat with cans of coke. Gulliver comes to the scene and finds his phone is still working. He has 12 voice messages from Darcy. Turns out she is furious to have found out about Gulliver's plagiarized article. She has to now sail on the same trail Gulliver came through to do the Bermuda Triangle research herself. Gulliver doesn't want to go back to New York and face her, so he decides to stay in Lilliput permanently. Edward is not happy about the decision and tells the king he is suspicious of Gulliver. The king dismisses him, claiming that he trusts Gulliver. Because of his stay, the king gives Gulliver the title of the new general and demotes Edward to vice general. A jealous Edward turns Lilliput's defense system off, making it easier for their enemies Blefuchia to attack. Blefuchian soldiers and their king see this and plan to attack Lilliput immediately. They approach the kingdom through waters and launch cannonballs towards Lilliput. Being the general, now it is Gulliver's responsibility to stop them. He nervously steps into the water and starts to splash it around. The cannonballs do not work on Gulliver, who is massive compared to them. Eventually, he defeats the Blefuchians and becomes the savior of Lilliput. The people from Lilliput fulfill all of Gulliver's wishes. They even build a model of Times Square so he would feel at home. They change their clothing to match that of Gulliver's. Soldiers are appointed to cut his hair and give him massages. One night, Edward barges into the princess's chamber. He claims that it is his right to come in any time because he courts the princess. The princess finally reveals that she doesn't love him and doesn't want him to court her anymore. An angered Edward leaves for Blefuchia to ask for help from their king. Edward's men have found the Build Your Robot book Gulliver had on the boat. The Blefuchian king agrees to help him build a robot using the book to battle Gulliver. Some days later, Gulliver is at the model Times Square. When the bells of the palace ring, suggesting an invasion, Gulliver gets ready to battle tiny people, but is surprised when a huge robot being operated by Edward stands in front of him. Edward challenges him for a duel. Gulliver has no way out but to accept. He tries to push the robot, but it is way stronger than him. It picks Gulliver up with his pants and makes him accept defeat. Gulliver also confesses that everything he said about him being the president is a lie. The king and the princess are surprised to have been betrayed by him. Edward sends Gulliver to a forbidden place called the Island Where We Dare Not Go as a punishment. When Gulliver is left there, he is picked up by a giant little girl. Turns out the island is the home of giants. The girl thinks Gulliver is a toy and keeps him in her Barbie house, dressing him in girly pink clothes. Meanwhile, back in Lilliput, Darcy's body washes up on the shore. Gulliver has told everyone that Darcy is his princess back home, so Edward recognizes her and imprisons her. She meets King Theodore and his queen in the prison, who have been captured after Gulliver's defeat. Horatio sees this and decides to travel to the island where we dare not go to get Gulliver back. He is minuscule on the island and manages to reach Gulliver safely. The little girl's dollhouse also has a skeleton of a dead U.S. Air Force pilot. Gulliver uses the parachute to escape and fly back to Lilliput. He first goes to meet Darcy in the prison and confesses that he has a crush on her. She forgives him for plagiarizing the article and seems to be opening up to him. Gulliver has decided to challenge Edward for a duel. He doesn't want to prove his bravery anymore, but genuinely wants to help Lilliput. The following day, the two stand before each other, ready to battle. Gulliver wants Edward to give the kingdom back to King Theodore if he wins, but if he loses, Edward will destroy the kingdom altogether. The two fight, and Edward overpowers him within seconds. Horatio runs to help him and manages to get inside the robot. He defeats Edward from inside, eventually depowering the robot. After that, Gulliver easily manages to defeat it, and the crowd erupts in cheers. Even Darcy celebrates the win. Because of Horatio's bravery, he is provided permission to court Princess Mary. The two finally kiss. But just then, Edward, who has reached the point of insanity, takes the princess hostage. But the princess, finally having enough of Edward, beats the traitor up in frustration. Darcy then kisses Gulliver for the first time. The Blefuchian king and Theodore are about to initiate the war again, but Gulliver stops them. 
He successfully helps to make peace between the rival island nations by reciting Edwin Starr's war, and finally he, along with Darcy, return to New York City on their repaired ship. Cut to a few weeks later, Gulliver has left the mailroom job and is a travel writer now. He and Darcy are in a happy relationship. Gulliver has just completed a travel assignment, and the movie ends as the two walk out of Darcy's office while holding hands. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.